a smile on your face when you're moving from place to place. place. Good morning, good morning, morning, good morning. Good morning, viewers, and welcome back to the Tobago Updates Morning Show, coming to you here live from the Port Mall in Scarborough, Tobago. All right, viewers, as we get started this morning, we're heading on into our first segment with Watson Duke, political leader of the Progressive Democratic Patriots, PDP. Good morning to you, Mr. Duke. Good morning, my brother. Good morning, Tobago Updates. And good morning to Prime Minister Rowley. Yes, good, good morning. Good morning. Yes, good morning. Are you hearing me clearly? Right. Is my audio clear? Yes, good morning. Yes, good morning, uh, Mr. Duke. Good morning and welcome to our program. This morning we're talking about Tobago Carnival 2023. Right, and we're talking about your assessment of the outcome and the rollout of our carnival this mm. year and your position as it relates to Tobago surviving Tobago surviving a carnival on its own without the support of Trinidad. I would really like to get your further opinion on this and how you came to this assessment and the relevance of your of, of your 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 thoughts on this. It's simple, simple. Um once you are in the embryonic stage of anything, then you have to act as if you are in that embryonic stage. You can't operate as if you are Lord unto yourself. And so to, it will be best for Tobago to flesh out its carnival mandate, what you would regard as the best performing Soka Monarch song, what you would regard as the best Calypso, what you would regard as something that is desirous for your street parade, how much persons you want, how much bands you want, and the distance one would go for that. Tobago has to flush out all of these things, and it must be Tobago-centric. But more than that, Tobago has to remember that it is now, not now starting Carnival. Tobago began Carnival from since we had Trinidad and Tobago. There was no Trinidad Carnival and Tobago Carnival, so there's no separation. And so therefore, Tobago has to ask itself, in the fact that we have no money in the coffers how are we going to spend government funds how are we going to spend the funds belong to, are we going to keep two carnival is the people of uh, are the people of tobago so much hell-bent on fet carnival fet in particular that you're going to keep two or are you going to keep one carnival if you're going to keep one carnival what is the best time for that carnival would you be given the same wear it all um as the same carnival monday and tuesday to have your carnival and so we have to work it out you cannot just do it by yourself you have to sit down and discuss with trinidad it's only a fool will lead on his own understanding a wise man will garner the, 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 the learning from others and build on it frankly trinidad is a mecca of carnival <laughs> you can be no miami carnival no nottingham hill carnival without trinidad trinidad did look at our artists or artists that they are earning foreign exchange by jetting all over the world. This, that, that, because people have a love for what Trinidad has created within their carnival domain. The soca, the, 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 the calypso, the steel band, the rhythm, the dance. Nobody could dance carnival music like Trinidadians. It's just in the flesh. And if you want to have a carnival that's going to take on a particular international stage, you don't reinvent the wheel. You look at the best of the best and you learn. That's what I'm saying. So if we have to survive, we have to look at the best of the best. And the best of the best is right here with us. Living in the same house, the same room. Trinidad and Tobago. You don't cut yourself off from Trinidad and say you're going to do it on your own. As I said in my previous press conference, um, Nam Nam, our Suka Monarch champion across here, and congratulations to him wherever he is. It's like a very good tune. Nice. I love it. But that tune has no chance of survival. In the Soka Monarchy in Trinidad, the culture is different. So we need to first of all understand our culture. What is Tobago culture? And it seems as if we don't understand that. We just train fat, train fat. It would have been better for us to throw a block hole than to call it a second carnival. Call it a different thing. Call it Tobago D. And so therefore, there's nothing to measure it against. But when you say carnival, you have to measure it against Trinidad. So that is the mecca of carnival. Uh Watson Duke, I, I, I've heard you in terms of the, uh, the opening in response to the first question, and I'm, I'm asking, what's your position in terms of rating this second edition of the Tobago Carnival? Are you on the side of Gypsy in terms of 
not being as good or are you on the side of the voices indicating that it is definitely an improvement from the first edition? What's your position with regards to the execution? How do you read this second edition of the Tobago October Carnival? Well, if you know anything about Watson Duke, Watson Duke's position is his position. It has nothing to do with Gypsy or anyone else. I'm a thinker on my own. And so I'll answer the question on my own thinking. I would say that we have to stop feeding Tobago half-truths and lies about the carnival. I've listened to the to persons who belong to the Chamber of Commerce the Tobago Arm telling lies to Tobago and saying that 17,000 persons came to the island on the boat. That's a lie. The facts are out. It's about, let me see, it's about 8,000 persons came in one direction, came to Tobago. And half of that, half of those persons belong to Tobago, a person just conducting their day-to-day -day business and has nothing to do with Carnival. Yeah? We are overselling the fact that Tobago Carnival attracted people, but it didn't attract so much. On the, on the airplane, it says 5,000 persons travel one way and there were vacant seats. Again, let's look at the fact. 5,000 persons travel one way to Tobago and there were vacant seats. Half of that has to be persons who just do a normal business. So in fact, we have about 6,000 persons, perhaps, perhaps, as hypothetically, coming to the carnival. Where were they? They went on the streets. We didn't see no bands, no thousands of bands. The biggest bands were quite spaced out as a mouth with rotten teeth here and they're missing, you know what I mean? It doesn't look good for carnival. Carnival has to be a procession. It has to be a flow. It has to be from one into the next, you know? And, and so I'm just saying that we are trying to get notice in the wrong way. If we want to get notice, let's plan our carnival well. I have nothing against the Tobago carnival. Let's plan it well. Let the carnival be indigenous to Tobago. And we can have our mass men display what we see as our culture. Because there's no greater stage for a country to demonstrate its culture than during carnival. Yeah? Mr. There's Duke. No Sorry, uh, Mr. Duke, you spoke earlier about Tobago. Basically, you were talking about Tobago defining their carnival product as yes. separate from Trinidad. And you went on to say things like we need to identify what we want to do, what we want to say, and what we, how we want to present the carnival. But yeah. I am thinking, in my opinion, that the product has been established because even in this response, you're talking about what is our culture. And we have seen displays of our culture on the parade on Monday, we saw where they did a, a whole theatrical um, display a role out as well. So the, the product itself was defined as it relates to Tobago culture. It was definitive of who Tobago is. At least that was the attempt. And I think that it, it was rolled out in that kind of way. So the product is a little bit different to Trinidad. This is Tobago Carnival, as we said. You know, we have our national carnival in February. And then we have Tobago Carnival, which is Tobago centered, which wants to depict the, thing, depict the things that Tobago is known for historically and culturally and um are you saying that that product was not um a hundred percent defined in um the tobago carnival this year allow me to ask you a question i don't normally do this but just for my clarity so i could answer your question that product that was ruled out could you describe it in two sentences for me what was the product we offered we spoke about some of the cultural historical aspects of the tobago um tobago culture where no, they had the displays the along the, the route from was, i think it was from show park on monday what was displayed? Mr. The Dude. Yeah, could you tell me what was displayed by the Tobago people that represented their culture? The tourism division, the tourism division had a roll out of a masquerade from, I think it was from the Coast Guard, from Shore Park or the Coast Guard base coming all the way to the Esplanade at different spots where they had a display of cultural aspects of Tobago. But what, what, what was shown? See, culture is something that has to be grasped in a moment's Glance, you could say, Well, wow, wow, what is this? Is that Jan Jan Jackie? Is that Dwen? What is this? Is that Tan, um, Tan Talan Saga Boy? What is this? A dragon? What is this? When the when, when, the, when persons of different ethnicity display things, we know what it is. If it's a Hare Krishna, if it is a, a, a dragon dance, you know, what it is that we displayed on Monday that represents our Tobago centricness and that's my point this is lost it is lost it can't be defined because it can't be captured with the eyes as being distinct secondly not, not, not responding to the question any further than that if we are to develop a product who is to tell us that that product is 
something that the world wants to see. Many people create things, and it's not not nobody wants it. So you have to do your your analysis, mark, mark your market surveys, and ask yourself, what I'm creating, is this going to attract the world? And if it's going to attract the world, then let's go for it. I'm all for it. Mr. Duke, I, I, I know that you answered the question initially, but you stopped short of giving your opinion in terms of the perspective. Would you have deemed it a success or a failure, or you prefer not to say at this time? What's your position on the Tobago October Carnival? It can be looked at two ways. It is a success from the fact that there were persons who made money, all right? And um, yeah, those who are selling on the road, rentals, cars, houses, whatever, they make money, right? Persons actually had something to, to go on fet and that kind of stuff. It's a success from that point. But it's a total, abject, colossal, gigantic failure. When one look at the business people that it created, because it is not, it does not create sustainable business. Coming out of this carnival, have we created new mass men, new mass women? Have we created a factory that could manufacture uh, mass outfits so much so that it could attract the world and turn that? What did we do in Tobago that makes someone go, wow? It has to create a wow effect. There's no wow effect coming out of our carnival, right? And, and that's one aspect. The other aspect of failure is the monetary aspect. Uh, right after the heels of the carnival, we have our beloved chief appearing to the media and saying, hey, we only have $6 million to run the country. Come on, who does that? Who really does that? You throw a big fit and the mass are broken. I come like them worthless people. They're going to party, dressing up in the blessed thing, wearing bling bling, drinking whole night, and next day they want a job to go to work. They want you to buy lunch with them because their money ran out. You have to manage what you have until you get what you need. Manage so, what you have until you get what you need. That's a failure. So based on what you're saying in terms of the comparison uh, with the concern rates after the carnival, uh, if it were up to you, you would not spend the budgeted 12 million plus on carnival. How would you spend it? That's something you'll have to wait for my man my mandate. When I when my mandate, my manifesto, I will tell you what I will do with Tobago Carnival. Right? I wouldn't say it out now. Right. I don't want to damper the chances of my colleagues, let them do what they feel is best and let the world and our society judge them. But when I roll out my mandate, which will be soon enough, you will know what I'll do with Kabega Carnival. All right. So is it that we can expect to see uh, an updated uh, mandate coming forward on the part of the Progressive Democratic Patriots? You know, you have touched on a topic there that takes us uh, a little into a sneak peek. Well, of course, of course. Let me just say to you that the Progressive Democratic Patriots is always on the cutting edge of our society and we want to always reflect what the members of our society needs and, and, and the, the demand and as such we have been listening to the ground where carnival is concerned we have been listening to the ground where employment is concerned where healthcare is concerned and where every single facet of our lives are concerned and i want to tell you the mandate that's going to come out some things will be rehashed but some things will be updated and upgraded to better suit the needs of tobagonians all right, Mr. Duke. Um, so it's quite clear that um, we could look forward to something um, new, fresh, different with a little touch from the PDP coming up uh, sometime soon. Yes. And of course, we've mm -hmm. had your opinion on what Carnival 2020, 2023 looked like. Although you still didn't say exactly if it's a win or a loss. Eh? You mm -hmm. just mentioned some areas. You still don't know if it's a win or a loss for Watson Duke. <laughs> he, 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 gave, he gave us the politician response. That's He's right. politically correct, but it has been duly noted. <laughs> right. Thank you. Right. Thank you. All right, we want to say thank you very much again, uh, Watson Duke, for joining us here on set uh, this morning as we spoke about Tobago October Carnival and getting the, pro the perspective of Assemblyman, you know, up there in Roxborough and also, uh, quite importantly, a political leader of the Progressive Democratic Patriots really giving his um you know his take on the tobago october carnival you know sometimes adana we hear uh, the views and perspectives and i'm thinking last night's meeting i'm thinking just as uh, watson duke spoke about in terms of the the chief secretary and then you 
uh, you, you're thinking of the the interview that we just concluded there. Oh. And sometimes we wonder if with all these ideas and these thoughts and these hopes that's for Tobago, right. if collectively, if we can all just work together, together right, uh, to right. make it happen. But I suspect that's just a dream uh, <laughs> in the reality of politics. And those who are more experienced in the field will certainly probably say the same. All right, viewers, we want to thank you so much for continuing to choose the Tobago Updates Morning Show. And we invite you to stay tuned as we are prepared to head on out to a break. And we remind you that this is your opportunity to share, share the, the live, share the live, share the live.